from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Seema. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of ICICI Securities, it's our pleasure to host the management of dollar industries to discuss the second quarter earnings call. Uh, there will be an investor presentation from the management followed by Q&A. Uh, from the management side, we have Mr. Ankit Gupta, President Marketing, and Mr. Rajay Patudia, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, so request management to please to, uh, take over the calls from here. Thank you, Varun. Good afternoon and a very happy Diwali to all of you. Thank you for joining us today for the Dollar Industries Limited Q2 FI24 earnings call. I'll take you through the business, business and operational highlights of the quarter gone by while our CFO, Mr. Ajay Patojia, will share the financial metrics. We are happy to state that the company achieved strong top and bottom line growth in Q2 FI24. Total income increased by 21% year on year and 26% quarter on quarter, reaching 413 crores in Q2 FY24. While the total volume grew by around 40% year on year, net profit for the quarter grew significantly by 44% year on year and 71% quarter on quarter on quarter to 25 crores. We are pleased to see that the company has emerged stronger from the challenges of FY23. Raw material prices have stabilized and high cost inventory is no longer within the system. This is evident in the gross profit margin, which, are, which has increased by 189 basis points year on year to reach 33% in Q2 FY24. The cash conversion cycle in Q2 FY24 improved to 147 days, down from 167 days in Q2 FY23, largely attributed to a 14 day reduction in inventory. This reduction in inventory days can be primarily attributed to the removal of high-value inventory from the system. We anticipate a promising second half of FI24 driven by stable raw material prices and strong push towards premiumization, which will help us sustain and grow our margins. Our strategic decision to appoint Safali Khan as the brand ambassador so dollar always has yielded good results, with economic segment revenue increasing by 39% year on year. Additionally, we have witnessed remarkable growth in volume in this segment, up by 52% year on year. Response to our recently launched Force Max activewear and women's athleisure products in the quarter gone by has been overwhelmingly positive. The growth in Missy portfolio is 18% year-on-year in value terms and 17% year-on-year in volume terms. Goes a long way in reiterating our focus on increasing the share of non-men segment. Force makes grew 50% year-on-year in both value and volume terms, which reinforces our commitment towards growth in higher margin segment. The strong growth witnessed in Missy as well as Force Next portfolio gives us the confidence that the premium segment will continue to play a vital role in achieving sustained revenue and profitability growth in the future. In Q2 FI24, our advertising expenses amounted to rupees 32 crores, whereas in Q2 FI23, it was rupees 25 crores. Our annual target for advertising expenditure remains within the range of 6 to 6.5% 6 of our top line. Turning our attention to Project Laksha, in Q2 FY24, we welcomed 22 new distributors into this initiative, increasing our total distributor count to 271, a significant rise from 229 distributors we had in FY23. We are happy to report that Project Laksha's contribution to company's domestic sales has grown from 19% in FI23 to 25% in H1 FI24. Presently, we have Laksha distributors operating in 13 states, and our expansion efforts are ongoing with a target to bring around 65 to 70% distributors under Project Laksha by FI26. 
In H1, F524, our modern trade on e-commerce sales accounted for approximately 3% to our total sales. Our goal is to raise this figure to around 8% by FI26. Our commitment to sustainability remains a top priority and we are dedicated to implement, implementing eco-friendly practices across our operations. This includes a focus on reducing our carbon footprint and promoting responsible manufacturing processes. Driven by the success of Project Luxor, technological advancement, product launches, drive towards premiumization and the overall growth in the industry and the economy. We believe we are very poised for strong top and bottom line growth in the near future. Thank you all. Now I would hand over the call to our CFO, sir, Mr. Ajay Patozia, to talk about the financial metrics. Thank you, Ankiji. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks for joining the call. I will greet a brief overview of the financial number for the quarter before we open for question and answer. I hope everyone would have got a chance to look at the earning presentation and the phrase released by now. While Ankiji has already covered the macro outlook, I will try to explain in more micro manner the financial performance of the quarter gone by. Our revenue from operation rose by 21% year on year basis to rupees 413 crore in quarter 2 FY24 from Rs. 340 crore in quarter 2, FY23. Gross profit reached 135 crore, witnessing a strong year-on-year -year growth of around 29% and quarter-on-quarter -quarter increase of around 27%. Gross profit margin for Q2, FY24 stood at around 33% against 31% in Q2, FY23. As spending by the 189 basis point year-on-year, -year, the year-on-year -year margin expansion is is indicative, indicative of the stability in raw metal prices, which had posed a significant challenge to the industry during FY23. Operating EBITDA in Q2 FY24 showed strong growth, increasing by 38% year on year, reaching to Rs. 42 crore. The operating EBITDA margin for the quarter expanded by 121 basis point year on year to 10%. Profit after tax for the quarter witnessed a substantial 44% year-on-year increase, reaching 25 crore, with the PAT margin reaching 6%. Our commitment to strategic priorities and growth pillars remain unwavering as we focus on our long-term object of achieving sustainable growth and profitability. With a strong quarter and focus on premiumization, we are confident in our ability to achieve robust revenue and profit growth in the current financial year as well as in the near future. Now, moving on the brand-wide contribution in quarter 2, FY24, our mid-segment Big Boss contributed around 36%. Our economic segment <coughs> dollar always contributed around 38%. Our premium segment Force NHT contributed around 4%. Our women segment uh, dollar women contributed around 9%. And for our winter segment, uh, thermal contributed around 11%. With this, we now open the floor for question and answers. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We take our first question from the line of Rahul Jain from Credit Wealth. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, please. Thanks for the opportunity and, sir, congratulations on a wonderful set of numbers. Uh, so, a couple of things, sir. Uh, one, on the volume you have mentioned in your presentation that we had about 40% volume growth in quarter two. So, just to understand, uh, the pricing and the volumes. 
So if you could share details about the average selling price of FI23 and the average selling price in the current half H1 and the volume growth overall in H1. So um, in uh, quarter two, uh, we did a volume growth of uh, 40%. With a value growth of uh, overall uh, revenue growth of 21%. If we compare the ASP of uh, Q2 FI23 versus Q2 FI24, uh, there has been an ASP decline of around 13%, 1.3. Sure. And so currently, as we speak, as on say 30th September, the overall first six months average would be around 12 15% below the. FI23 price, is that fair assumption? Yeah, round about. Okay. So, sir, going ahead, in the previous call, you had given a guidance of revenue growth of about 11-12% and margins of around 11-12% on the EBITDA side. So, uh, two things. One, uh, do we still <coughs> believe that guidance is achievable considering the pricing pressure still continue in spite of a fantastic volume growth? The pricing still lags behind, and uh, typically, your second half we need to grow around 18-20% to achieve that 11-12% guidance of revenue uh, in terms of value. Yeah. So um, the thing is that uh, if you look at the H1 numbers, we did a overall revenue growth of 5.23%, right? And uh, in uh, since. Uh, the second half is always uh, better than the first half because uh, uh, Q4 is uh, uh, really heavy for our industry. Plus, in this uh, particular fiscal year, uh, we'll get a uh, uh, ease sale also in uh, Q4 because uh, ease is uh, around uh, 8th of April 2024. So, uh, sure. Q4 uh, is supposed to be much more stronger. And uh, we are very hopeful and we are very optimistic about the fact that the guidance that we had given uh, in the last call, uh, we uh, stick by it. Revenue should be somewhere around uh, 12 to 13 percent kind of a growth, and EBITDA would be somewhere around uh, 11 or 11 odd percent, approximately. Great, sir. Sir, how are the booking for the thermal sales going on? What is the expectation on thermal? So in uh, Q2, we did a good thermal sales. Uh, we saw growth of. Uh, we saw uh, saw growth of 15 percent. And uh, we are very hopeful that uh, the winter should be good this year. Uh, unlike uh, the last couple of years uh, which went by, uh, it was not that great. And we are very hopeful about good winters. Sure. And with regards to surprising, one of our peers just mentioned that uh, there was a price hike in October first week, but that has got reversed. So what is our take on this and when do we expect some pricing movement on the upside? So. Uh, See, everyone in the industry uh, wanted to take a price hike, uh, given the uh, kind of, uh, like, uh, everyone thought that the raw material prices have stabilized and everything. And it has been stabilized. Uh, we don't see any uh, change right now. But since the yarn market is a bit soft right now, uh, there is no change in the price. So uh, we have to reverse the uh, price hike that was Sure. And do we expect, uh, how do we expect the pricing going ahead? Uh, currently, we don't see a, a, any major change happening in the prices. Sure. And just one last question, sir, on the longer term basis. You have given a guidance of 2,000 crores for FI26 in terms of revenue. So that would be at the current uh, prices, product prices? Sorry? Or at, you have given a guidance of 2,000 crores of sales for FI26. Is that guidance taking into account the current prices of the yarn and the products, or are we assuming some price inflation in that revenue guidance? See, every year uh, there uh, um, there has be uh, every year we take uh, some price hike to the tune of uh, five to six percent, and uh, taking that thing into account, uh, we are we are very hopeful that we'll be able to achieve uh, two thousand crores by FI twenty six. Sure. And last thing on the working capital, longer term. So uh, the Laksha project in terms of addition of distributors and also with regards to channel financing, we have been doing some work on both these things for last about uh, one and a half years. Uh, 
it has been a bit slow in terms of execution, but it seems to be picking up. So, in terms of our working capital on the debtor days, what is your expectation uh, that how should we see the working capital more so on the debtor days going ahead in say next two quarters, next six eight quarters? Where do you see the data is coming down to? In in couple of years, we are very hopeful that we'll be able to bring it down to somewhere around 70, 75 days. Mm -hmm. And given the current situation and current execution, we are quite hopeful that we should be around 75 days in terms of data days. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a couple of years back, if you would have seen our uh, overall data days, it was somewhere around 120, 125 days. Hmm. And uh, we brought it down to 108 days currently. Mm. So it is majorly due to the luxury project and the dealer financing scheme that we are running. Currently, mm. we have around 300 distributors who are already enrolled into uh, distributor financing scheme. Mm. So uh, as soon as more and more distributors uh, come into this particular program, uh, we are very hopeful that we'll be able to reduce the debt a day overall. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best and happy Diwali to you and the entire team. Thank you so much. Happy Diwali to you too. Thank you. Thank you. We we'll take the next question from the line of Pratna Junjunwala from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on strong set of numbers. Um, I wanted to understand the competitive intensity in the market uh, for both mass and uh, premium categories. Uh, whether uh, continues to remain high or it has become milder. What, what is your sense on competitive intensity? See, our, uh, pen, hi, pen, uh, our industry uh, is based out of, is based off organized players as well as unorganized players. And uh, at our particular level, our peer groups, if we see, we are like five players at a almost similar level. So, the competition has always been there and it will be there. So uh, the intensity is uh, just as it was uh, the last quarter. So uh, it's not that the competition has reduced or the intensity of competition has reduced. Uh, it's just that uh, how your strategy works out uh, in the market. Okay, okay, understood. So, um, uh, if I want to understand uh, the demand for at leisure. Uh, I understand Postnex has grown by 50%, uh, but uh, if you would give, give some color on uh, your athleisure space, how it is uh, uh, improving with the time? So athleisure, athleisure is doing uh, good. Uh, currently, it is contributing around 12 to 13% to our total uh, sales. And uh, it's not that, uh, like the growth has been good. So in Postnex, uh, uh, majority of these, uh, if we talk about uh, in, in terms of value, uh, so uh, Postmates at Leisure is doing really very good. Okay. Which and apart from post we increased our ASP from 250 rupees to 285 rupees. So. Okay, you've taken price hike in Sportswear at Leisure? Uh, no, it's just the product mix which has changed. So uh, uh, during winter, so uh, a lot of hoodies, sweatshirts, um, um, we be uh, the thermals in first night. So all those sales taken into account in the second quarter, the ASP uh, rose from 250 to 285. Okay, okay. And I was also going through a receivable days earlier. Participant also asked in the same. Uh, it's like in the COVID times, we saw good reduction in receivable days. I wanted to understand why it has increased again to some extent. Not fully, but yes, to some extent. So in terms of number of days, uh, Prerna, it has been the same. During COVID time, it was somewhere around 99 days, but currently it is 108 days. So it's a matter of nine days. Uh, and uh, mostly if you see, uh, in absolute terms, if you see uh, our, uh, the overall data that is outstanding uh, on our balance sheet, it's almost the uh, revenue that we did in Q2. Okay, okay. And if I want to understand the winter wear demand, uh, how is it uh, uh, likely to be, uh, in your opinion, uh, this year? See, uh, we are uh, we are contemplating that it should be good, and given the uh, forecast of the weather that we are seeing every day, monitoring it, uh, the team is very positive about it. 
and uh, if the if the winter season is uh, so in Q2 we did a 15% growth in our uh, summer sales as compared to uh, last year Q2 and uh, if the season goes well uh, Q3 should be really good for us. Okay, was there any large, uh, large large inventory last year, or uh, I mean, uh, were they low on inventory last year? Just wanted to understand what happened last year as well. I mean, uh, do yeah, is there inventory system? Yeah, so there was a lot of uh, there was some inventory which was uh, there in the system, which will get cleaned up uh, this particular system. Okay, understood, sir. Thank you, and all the best, sir, and happy Diwali. Happy Diwali, too. So thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your question to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the question queue. We take the next question from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers and best uh, wishes for the upcoming festival. Uh, sir, I wanted to check uh, from premium in a way side. Uh, the players there are not seeing such level of volume growth. In fact, uh, that segment has been under uh, uh, quite a bit of pressure. So, wanted to check is the market uh, seeing some down trading that is helping us uh, deliver such uh, strong volume growth. Uh, according to you, what are the drivers uh, actually that are helping us? So, uh, so Anshu, as per us, uh, there is no down trading which is happening. It's uh, it's just that uh, see, uh, we deal into basic products and uh, it's a second scheme, right? Uh, people can postpone the purchase but can't do away with it. And uh, if a person is wearing a jockey, he won't downgrade himself to uh, maybe Big Boss. Or a person wearing Big Boss won't uh, downgrade to the economy range of products that we manufacture. So uh, I don't think, uh, like, uh, based on the basis of the feedback that we get from the market, it's not the downgrading that's happening. Uh, it's just a postponement, so, uh, some amount of po postponement in the premium segment. But uh, for uh, luckily for us, uh, Fortnex did really well in Q2. So we did a volume growth of somewhere around uh, 50 50 percent. Right. right. And uh, when were these price cuts, uh, uh, which are implied by this uh, 40 percent volume growth and 20 percent uh, revenue growth? When were these price cuts taken by uh, uh, the players like uh, you? So the, the price cuts started happening from the end of Q1 last fiscal, and uh, we we did a uh, we did a price cut till uh, April of this fiscal. Okay, okay. And yeah. what was the uh, quantum of the price hikes and all that you have taken uh, between this period? So during COVID, there was a uh, price hike uh, of somewhere around uh, 18 to 20 percent. I meant price cut that you have taken between uh, 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 Q1 end and uh, uh, Q1 FI23 and Q4 FI23. So if you if you see our uh, the Q1 of last fiscal was at its peak, and if you uh, compare it with the Q1 of uh, this fiscal, uh, with respect to the ESP, there has been a decline of somewhere around 15 percent. 15 percent. And what is the uh, kind of uh, RM inflation uh, uh, you are seeing? Obviously, you mentioned that uh, the raw material is uh, on a softer side. Uh, so is it like uh, uh, on a declining trend or is there is some level of inflation that you are seeing on a YOI basis? Currently, there has been uh, no changes in the prices, but uh, the yarn so the yarn manufacturers are a bit stressed because of the low exports. So that's why we are saying that the raw material prices are on a softer side. And uh, but uh, currently we don't see any change happening in the yarn market as well. Got it, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. Uh, that's it from us. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankush Agarwal from Surge Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Firstly, sir, uh, can you highlight the volume growth for Lakshya project in Q2? 
So uh, on a half-yearly basis, uh, uh, the volume growth was 32 percent. Vis-a-vis uh, in our non-lux, like overall at a company level, on a half-yearly basis, we did a volume growth of somewhere around 19 to 20 percent. Okay, so like in Q1 we did 13 percent, and H1 you're saying 32, right? It's the same number, right? Uh, distributors that were there uh, as of H1 last year and now. Yes, yes, yes. On a like-to-like Yeah. Uh, secondly, sir, can you give an ASP ladder of, you know, what kind of ASP we have between various categories, like say man, woman, uh, fourth and exterior side is around 250 to 80 rupees. So on similar lines, what would be the ASP for different categories of products? So uh, if we talk about dollar man, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the ASP would be somewhere around 80 rupees. Okay. For our uh, regular products, the economy range of products, do- dollar always would be somewhere around 50 rupees. Mm-hmm. Nifty would be 110. Okay. And uh, Postmax is uh, around 285. Okay. And so, uh, uh, it is around uh, 32. Sorry? Uh, socks, uh, the socks category yeah. that we make, it's... Uh, it's around 35 rupees. Right. And sir, uh, one thing over here, so I think we did this whole brand uh, exercise of either the, uh, rather than going at individual brands, uh, putting it under categories of men, women, junior, always and all that. But if I look at our advertisements and branding now, uh, even though we have like branding as say dollar men, but the major portion of the branding still goes to Big Boss. The dollar man is there, but the major visibility is still Big Boss. So I'm trying to understand, uh, like, the whole philosophy of going after category and not individual brand, that is still not reflecting in our brand, uh, you know, the way we are still marketing and branding. So I wanted your thoughts on that. So uh, uh, it has been done uh, consciously, uh, See, we have been uh, advertising Big Boss for quite a long time, like uh, it has all, um, around uh, 20 years. So from uh, somewhere around 2003-2004, we started advertising for Big Boss. And uh, people know Big Boss, like Fit Hair Boss, the tagline, right? So uh, if you do a brand architecture also, you have to be sensible about one thing that uh, the consumer does not get lost in a way. So uh, when we did the uh, survey, uh, dollar was much dollar came out to be much more stronger. But at the same time, there were there were a set of uh, consumers who knew Big Boss. So now we don't use Big Boss as a sub brand. We use it as a collection. So uh, ultimately, uh, we are we are uh, we are confined ourselves into six categories right now. But uh, we will be using in our advertisement Dollar Man Big Boss because now Big Boss acts as a collection and Akshay Kumar has been uh, retained for uh, ad- um, advertising into uh, Dollar Man Big Boss only. Okay. Right. So like in the longer run, this would still stay relevant. Like you're not trying to like fade away. Like it, it won't be fade out. Like uh, Big Boss, it will still be there. Not in, not in near future. But yeah, maybe uh, five, seven years down the line, we may think of uh, just writing Dollar Man instead of uh, Dollar Man Big Boss. Right, got it. Uh, and lastly, sir, again on uh, receivables. So, I mean, if I look at, say, last year H1, uh, the luxury scheme was contributed around 16, 17%. That has jumped to about 25, 26%. But still, the receivables are still, I mean, at similar levels or at higher levels. So we are not really seeing any kind of benefit, at least quantitative in terms of results, of luxury distributors having a substantially lower uh, receivable state. So, I mean, what is not helping? Are we seeing much more higher receivables due on the remaining distributors versus last year, or like what is not adding up over here? See, it's a, uh, reducing your overall working capital days is a process. It won't happen in a... No, I'm talking specifically about receivables because... So, uh, yeah, but uh, as I told you that uh, two years back, the kind of receivable days we were into and reducing it to 108 days currently, 
the the it was mostly contributed by the lakshya distributors and the dss team that we have and out of 300 uh, dss uh, distributors like the distributors who got in, enrolled in, uh, themselves into distributor financing scheme most of them are uh, in lakshya project only so uh, maybe that's why a major impact is not been seen right now but yeah in a couple of years you would see a, a drastic difference so what would be currently uh, the average tables day for lakshya uh, distributors versus our normal distributors a broad range so uh, average in uh, lakshya distributor is somewhere around uh, 70 75 days okay yeah and would this number also for the lakshya ankush may we request you to join the question queue sir we have several participants what do you okay want to okay i'll get back to you We we'll take the next question from the line of Darshan from Crown Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, hi, uh, good evening, team. Uh, hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, just uh, wanted to know, sir. I think we've done uh, very well this quarter. So, are uh, you know maybe is there a chance that you know we can do even better going into the Q3 because. With the winter coming back, which we are probably going to see after a few years, so can we, you know, maybe push our guidance a bit higher? That is what I was saying. Are we being a bit conservative in our guidance of, you know, uh, double-digit growth? Can it, you know, surpass that? That's my first question. And the margin trajectory with uh, more premium products, we already reached double-digit right now. So. Can there be further improvement because of thermal weather as that's a higher margin product, right? So just wanted a clarification on that, like how much better margin is thermal able to provide to us? So uh, we always believe in uh, under promising and over achieving. So uh, we won't be revising our uh, overall guidance. Uh, it will be uh, same as we. Uh, told uh, in the last call itself uh, revenue growth uh, will will stick to it revenue growth we are seeing around uh, 12 to 13% and uh, ebitda would be somewhere around approximately 11% this particular fiscal uh, okay but uh, fair enough sir but then in terms is it possible that like, we will be able to over deliver looking at the conditions or maybe the market conditions are not uh, that uh, are not conducive for that part of growth sir Is that like a fair assumption? Sorry, uh, I, I didn't get your question. So I meant that uh, agree, we want to under promise and over deliver. But in a can we be a bit optimistic with our current scenario? If that may because we are having a good market condition with stabilization of raw material. Uh, if if the winter season is uh, good, then uh, we we can uh, we can assume that uh, we can do a bit better and. Uh, we can be optimistic about the revenue uh, oh, perfect perfect and this i also wanted to know in terms of uh, our margin to check we currently we are at around divided for 11% so a year on year how would we see it to grow maybe uh, one percentage to see increase going forward with our you know working capital as well as other premiumization efforts that's a fair assumption to make sir Uh, see the, the given given the uh, volatile nature of the raw materials that we have been facing for past couple of years so it would be very hard to uh, actually comment on that right now but uh, yeah in a couple of years uh, we should we should reach a steady state where uh, uh, our uh, ebitda margins can be somewhere around 14 to 15% kind of a level so okay okay and so this was last question and tell me Pricing. So as we said, we had around a 15% of decline. So just uh, wanted to get a sense for what is leading to that decline. Are the uh, consumers becoming more price sensitive, or to push demand, we have to either take cuts or you know. Your your voice of voice is a bit muffled, so it can be just uh, a bit more clear. Just to check. Some, some background noise also. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. Uh, hope to, I hope I hope this is better. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah. Yeah, so just wanted to get a sense in terms of pricing that uh, I think uh, our consumers rejecting prices because uh, of they are because of inflation problems that they are facing or are we can we sustain so or to increase demand we have to keep prices low. So how is it working out in terms of pricing scenario that you feel that you know okay our pricing change will be. We'll be able to take hikes or uh, ASPs will increase due to a product mix change only. So, we just wanted to get a sense in that. So, currently, we are not thinking of taking any kind of a hike. Uh, there, there might be a change in the product mix which will lead to ASP growth. But um, at a consumer level, see, they, uh, they don't... Uh, it doesn't matter uh, if you increase or decrease rupees 1 or 2. But uh, at a retail level, retailer psychology or a channel partner psychology, and there are also a number of factors which uh, plays an important role. Uh, our industry comprises of 50% unorganized market in men's segment. And uh, there are a lot of regional players uh, in the economy range of segment, in the mid-premium also, uh, who are stronger in their particular region. Plus there are uh, five uh, players, three in the listed, two in the unlisted. So everyone has to be on the same page in order to increase the price in the market, right? Suppose if you increase the price and the rest of the players uh, who have a similar kind of a product that you have, uh, it will it will really cause a problem in the market and the uh, channel partner sentiments uh, could be hurt through that. So uh, we are not uh, taking any price hike or uh, it's not planned right now. But uh, yeah, product mix changes uh, will definitely show some amount of... Uh, uh, ASP uh, changes. Uh, oh, perfect, perfect. Uh, thank you so much, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants to please limit your question to two per participant. We take the next question from the line of Henin Visaria, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. The first question is, uh, what is the current status of EBOs, exclusive business outlets? As for the presentation, we can see that currently we are working with you. Uh, but what we are seeing in the near future for... Uh, I'm to interrupt you, sir. So your voice is sounding very muffled. If you are on a headset, I would request you to switch to the handset, please. Hello. 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 Hey, Nilsa, are you there? The line for the current question is Nilsa is disconnected. We move on to the next question from the line of Rehan from Equitree Capital. Please go ahead. <coughs> Hi, am I audible? Yes. Audible. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my question. I had a question regarding such a great volume growth, if you could just brief or tell us on which segment you saw the most growth from and if there's any, like if you see any reason for the same. So uh, we saw a good growth uh, in our premium segment post next. Uh, it was to the tune of 50%. Okay. Any reason for the same? Uh, in, uh, we also saw a good growth in our uh, economy range of products to the tune of 42% uh, in terms of value and 57% uh, in terms of volume. So uh, it's majorly attributed to the new TVC company that we came up with uh, using uh, Saifali Khan as the brand ambassador for economy range of products. And this was the first time also where we advertised for Postnext uh, in the cinema halls and uh, everywhere. Uh, we made a new TVC for Postnext also with uh, normal models, uh, not a known celebrity face. But yeah, I think uh, advertisement uh, has has impacted uh, the sales growth and uh, in, a, in a positive manner. Okay. And the second question would be any outlook you, since women wear segment also is a high margin business for you guys. Any percentage of revenue you think it could be potentially in the coming years? Like, do you see it to grow significantly or, you know, any form of guidance on the same? 
So uh, in our women segment, uh, we have dollar women missing, and uh, it's doing. Uh, it is also doing good. Uh, we, we saw growth of around 18% in terms of value and 25%. Uh, yeah, and uh, around uh, 25% in terms of volume. That so, is year on uh, year. Year on year basis. Okay. So in, in, in the quarter two, and. Okay. Uh, so uh, we are we are very hopeful that uh, for next uh, two to three years we'll see a good growth coming in uh, from Postnex and Missy. Apart from that, uh, this particular quarter we did uh, uh, in commerce also we saw a growth of around 25% uh, in terms of volume and 15% okay. uh, in terms of uh, value. Okay. So these would be a higher margin product, right? Thermals and women. Yeah, these, these are the higher margin uh, product ranges that we have. Apart from that, the uh, active wear range that we launched in Postnex, the athleisure category, uh, these are some of the product categories uh, that we are very hopeful about in the near future. That will increase the overall uh, AST at a company level. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Marcel, an individual investor. Please go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my first question is that, uh, like, what was the main reason? So, like, the reason you already explained, like, uh, regarding the increase uh, uh, of turnover in the, in the like quarter gone by. So, uh, will we sustain this kind of 412 crore rupees of, uh, rupees of turnover in the uh, December quarter also? And keeping in mind that, like, in corresponding December quarter in 2022, our sales was only 285 crore. So, uh, see, uh, the quarter three really depends upon uh, how the winter season goes. So, it is very uh, hard to tell whether uh, how the quarter would look like. Since uh, last year, the quarter was not good because of the poor winters and uh, winter coming in uh, very late. So, all the purchases had been stopped by the channel partners. And uh, this year, uh, we are very hopeful and... Uh, the best thing that we can do is uh, hope for a good weather, good winter season to pass by. But we are very hopeful about uh, our uh, third quarter. Okay. And my second question that uh, regarding this, uh, uh, the prices of raw material, as you said, the rise of raw material is softening as compared to Q2 also. So where do you stand in terms of the uh, price of raw material uh, currently vis-a-vis -vis the, the average price of Q2? And, and did we take any price cut or price hike in our product since 1st of October? So in uh, Q2, we didn't take any uh, price hike. In Q3, I'm saying in Q3. In Q3, we are not taking any uh, price changes, or price cuts or price hikes. Uh, we are not taking anything. And the, uh, and the price of raw material, how are the price of raw material are currently faring as compared to uh, every price of uh, 2000, uh, September 22? So uh, it is uh, it is at a stable level uh, currently. From past six months, uh, we have not seen any uh, much change in the uh, yarn prices. And uh, if we compare uh, Q2 last year versus Q2 this year, uh, we saw uh, overall ESPD growth of 13 percent. Okay, and this one important question you mentioned in the PPT that uh, the export revenue in FY26 will be 30 countries and 11 percent. So what do you mean by 11%? 11% of the target turnover? So it means our export revenue will be 200 crore rupees? So it's a 220 crore rupees because our target turnover for FY26 is 2,000 crore rupees. Yeah, we, we really want to uh, reach to that particular stage where uh, our export uh, increases. Uh, by FY26, we really want to reach uh, 30 countries uh, with a total revenue contribution being 11% to our total sales. But sir, like from the list of the countries you mentioned, I can see that you are present everywhere in uh, GCC, but the main country is the Saudi Arabia, where there is population, uh, Saudi Arabia population is like more than double of the entire five countries. But we are not there in Saudi Arabia. We are, we are there in UAE, UAE population is only 9 million, but the Saudi population is 36 million. We are, we, are, we are trying to explore Saudi as well. Uh, getting a good channel partner is a major task. So in exports, if you don't have a good channel partner uh, who can uh, partner with you and uh, spread
spread your products or market your products as his own, uh, you won't get any success over there. So, uh, so in Africa also, we have been trying uh, from past couple of years, and now we are getting uh, good partners, and we have started the African market. In fact, African market is also not bad. It's a it's a really great market with a lot of uh, the consumption level is really very high. Plus, uh, in the kids segment, we will be launching uh, Baba Suit and. Uh, from uh, zero, uh, from newborn to uh, three years, four years, kind of a product uh, range, and uh, this kids range does really well in the Middle East region and the African market. So it has a huge scope. But sir, I, but the main thing is that the US and the you. Europe. But, uh, hello, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir. I'm, I'm May I'm we request you to join the question queue, sir? I'm finishing. Like, let me complete my question. But like, sir, but there are the major, several participants waiting for the turn. Major economy of US and Europe, where we can get a, where we can place a much high price, that is still virgin. So, 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 like, what's the plan to, uh, to, uh, like, make in, uh, make an inroad in the US and the European market? Sir, so, uh, European market is really very different. Uh, in fact, if you talk about the body type uh, that the uh, European people have, uh, vis a vis uh, the people in the Middle East or uh, India, uh, the patterns, the shapes, uh, is very different. Plus the climatic conditions also, uh, they, they use more of uh, man-made fibers, the polyester or a, a poly cotton kind of a mix and we deal into pure cotton uh, kind of a material. So uh, it, it's a really very different market with a completely different product ranges. For that you have to have a very different set of product ranges which sell only in the European region. So that's why uh, we are not uh, considering Europe as of now. But yeah, in near future, uh, after we cover Saudi and uh, the uh, African space or the US, uh, then uh, we'll be able to uh, move to the European region uh, quite effectively. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're requested to please limit your question to two per participant. We take the next question from the line of Anik Mitra. From Phenonix Solution Private Limited, please go ahead, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, audible, sir. Uh, good afternoon, and wish all of you a very happy Diwali ahead. Uh, my first question is, uh, uh, sir, you have referred regarding premiumization. So, at this point of time, if I'm I'm not wrong, your uh, contribution of premium uh, product is around four percent. Uh, is my uh, uh, understanding correct? No, sir. Uh, in premiumization, we mean the high EBITDA level product. In premiumization uh, category, uh, we uh, include uh, four NST hour premium segment plus uh, thermal segment plus uh, dollar women. Uh, because all three category has higher level of EBITDA. Okay. So, so uh, what sort of EBITDA? Yeah, uh, like in uh, thermal, uh, we have the EBITDA of around 15 to 18 percent, and in uh, MISI, uh, that is dollar women segment, it is around same 14 to 17 percent, and in premium segment, uh, like force and it is around 18 to 20 percent. So, it is, uh, it, all the three categories are term under our premium segment. Okay. Sir, uh, what is the roadmap? Like, are you, uh, do you have a plan to uh, increase the contribution of these products in the pie, or uh, how how do you look at it? Uh, correctly, uh, like, uh, Force NXT contribute around 4% of our premium segment. So, we aspire to uh, increase to the 8% of our total contribution by FI26. In, in, like, in our human segment, it is around, uh, contribute around 12 to 13% overall contribution on our revenue and uh, we uh, <clears throat> generally launch new products in women's segment like uh, we uh, going to launch active gear in women's segment, we already launched at leisure segment. So they get the good response and uh, we hope that uh, and we last year we also launch laundry in our dollar women's segment. So uh, uh, we get that uh, <clears throat> uh, from this we get a good habitat margin and our total prevention product is increased. In, uh, uh, next year, we are also going to launch a uh, kit segment uh, under the dollar junior category. And they are also uh, under the category of uh, 15 to 18 percent margin, EBITDA margin level. So uh, we expect that our total prevention category increased by FI26. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
to 33 percent. From current year, it is 27 percent. Okay, got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Chatendra Agarwal from Relax Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, uh, sir. So I have, I'm sorry if there is some disturbance because I'm on the road. Two things. One, uh, when I look at you know project Laksha, right? Uh, it's almost like a quarter of our sales today, and uh, you still seem to give a guidance that it will be about 70 percent by FI 26. If the benefits of project Laksha are so visible, why is the strategy not being more aggressive? It's already like six years. I think five or six years we are already into the project, and we have another guidance of two more years to reach 70 percent. Can you explain that? So, uh, the, industry, the thing is that uh, the problem is the intense competition that we have uh, from the peer groups. And uh, in, uh, in our particular industry, what happens is that uh, having five players of a similar level, and you, you can't uh, actually afford to take a hit on your shelf space. So uh, this particular project, this particular project uh, requires a lot of field work, and uh, it takes around three to four months to get a distributor stabilized under the project. Until then, uh, we see uh, so we see some amount of gaps which happens in the market, and uh, and uh, everyone is just looking to increase their shelf space also. So uh, that's why uh, instead of having a dent in our overall revenue. Uh, we took a call to first penetrate into the grey areas, stabilize there, and uh, then move into the areas where the distributors are much more stronger and uh, bigger in size in terms of sales revenue that they give us. So that's why it's taking a bit of time. But uh, we uh, rest assured we are uh, very uh, focused about this particular project and uh, make it a new success. And my second question is related to the EBOs, right? Uh, I'm not sure how many EBOs we had last year, the same quarter. But uh, are you also able to track uh, what type of same store sales growth is coming in some of these uh, EBOs? I know the no volumes are very small, the numbers itself are small, but is there any, what type of, uh, basically what type of feedback is are those EBOs giving back to you? If you could share some of your thoughts, that would be very helpful. Those are the two questions. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, the thing is that uh, we started opening uh, EBOs uh, somewhere uh, in uh, 2021. To the uh, end, uh, so towards the end of 2021. So October 21 was uh, our uh, first EBO which opened in Ayodhya. Currently, we are standing at uh, 18 EBOs. The uh, major learning that we got. Uh, in this particular fiscal like uh, during the first half because uh, all uh, the EBOs were kept opening till uh, February or March of uh, last fiscal. So uh, the, the major uh, feedback or the major understanding or the major le lesson that we learned uh, about this particular uh, retail program or opening the EBO is that you need to have a higher ASP product first. The product mix should be very different from what you give it to the general trade. So we are working upon that. That's the reason why we have not opened any EBOs in the last six months' time. So uh, majorly, uh, we are working on that, uh, trying to create a few products which would be exclusive to our EBOs. Currently, we have introduced uh, four to five products that we have manufactured only for EBO, the Polo T-shirts. We are getting a good okay. response. Uh, last last month only it hit the store, and uh, we are getting good response. It's uh, it's just that uh, we need to crack uh, the particular uh, uh, product mix or uh, kind of uh, freshness or a newer product which does not go in the general trade where there is no conflict. Because as you know that in our general trade uh, things don't sell on MRP basis. And uh, in EBO, the consumer is always asking for uh, uh, like a pro promotions or some sort of discounting that uh, they expect. Because uh, in general, case, the Mondays, they don't sell the products on MRP basis. So that's the problem that we are facing. But uh, we are 
as soon as we are able to fix that and we will we'll start opening more and more stores any idea how many stores we'll have by march end or I'm maybe sorry, next year thank you sir maybe request so by, to join the question queue by march end uh, i think we should we should reach uh, uh, from 18 we should reach to somewhere around uh, 28 to 30 stores thank you sir The next question is from the line of Anushka Chitney from Aryan Capital Market. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question and uh, congratulations on a great result, sir. Uh, my question is also on the line of the EBOs, in that I wanted to know what's the uh, uh, the revenue per store and the average transaction value in these EBOs. If you can give us some idea. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? uh in can can you tell us about the revenue per store and the average transaction value in the bios yeah so uh, first of all I, w- i would really uh, i would apologize for my last statement that i made and i would like to clarify that uh, up till march uh, the number of stores would be somewhere around 21 to 22 and not 28 to 30 stores uh, and uh, regarding the average ticket size the average ticket size is somewhere around 1200 rupees uh, on an average and uh, on an average uh, each store uh, sale is somewhere around 2 to 2 and a half lakh and there are uh, there are a couple of stores which is uh, above uh, 4 lakh 5 lakh as well but on a, on an average it's uh, uh, somewhere around 2 lakh okay thank you so much sir thank you Thank you. We we'll take the next question from the line of Karan Sanwal from Nivesh I Investment Advisory. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, I have a clarification. Like, uh, do we manufacture all the products that we uh, sell, or do we outsource it as well? Outsource it as well? Uh, your your voice is muffled, actually. Uh, can you? So, so my question is: uh, Do we uh, manufacture all the products that we sell, or uh, do we outsource uh, uh, a portion of it? No, so uh, we, we we don't procure goods on an FOB basis. It's just that all the uh, intermediary processes are being outsourced to the job worker, and uh, up to a tune of twenty five percent, we have in-house manufacturing. Like uh, whether it be uh, spinning or uh, kneading, processing, cutting and stitching. So cutting is mostly in house. A uh, few contractors uh, outside, but uh, they work solely for us only because uh, cutting is a major, uh, major uh, process where we really need to focus and uh, where the quality of the pattern uh, gets determined. And uh, also, how are we uh, planning to scale up? Are we planning to scale up the in-house operations or uh, any capex plans that we have for for a year or maybe two three years down the line? So currently, we don't have any plans to expand our in-house manufacturing. It's uh, on a job work basis only, and uh, in our industry, it's very simple to add job workers and uh, increase your overall production level. Okay, good. Thank you so much, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Pallavi Deshpande from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. I wanted to know what would be the share of uh, outerwear to the total turnover. It is about 81 percent. Sorry, I didn't hear. 81 percent and outerwear is 19 percent. And where do we see this going to in next two years' time? Out of it. So next three years' time, uh, it would be somewhere around uh, 25 percent. Right. Sir. Because because in terms of volume, what happens is uh, in a way uh, sales in uh, in bulk. So the trade packs are a pack of ten or uh, so. So that's why uh, uh, to make a huge impact on the volume. It would be very difficult. That's why uh, from 90 to 25 percent. But in terms of value, in terms of the overall EST growth, uh, you uh, will will see a good difference in. Uh, so, what is the share in value terms? Is what I wanted.
So in, in, in terms of uh, value, um, just a second, just give us a second. I think it it should be somewhere around uh, 20 to 20 to 40. 21-22% kind of a thing. We don't have the figure ready right now in handy. So uh, we, we will get back to you like after the call. Right. Thank you so much, sir. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we take that as the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. I take the opportunity to thank everyone for joining this call. I hope we have been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with us. And uh, thank you once again. Happy Diwali to everyone of you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.